Hello friends, I'm Silale and welcome to The Narrative. This podcast is about giving our sports celebrities and personalities a platform to express themselves freely, share their opinions and give us a small, just a small peek into the life of a superstar athlete in Africa. We talk about anything and everything sports, but most of all, we have a good time. So let's get started. Now, I don't usually do this with uh, the guests on my podcast, but I'm going to make an exception today, okay? I'm going to go through their accolades because I believe it's an absolute flex. So here we go. The fittest woman in Kenya in 2017 won a silver medal at the 2018 Arnold Classic Africa, won a bronze medal at the 2019 African Championships, qualified and went for Elfit 2022, which was in Egypt, and to top it all off, She's a mom. Winnie, welcome to The Narrative. Thank you so much for having me. So I read an article in The Star that said Nairobi has fallen in love with CrossFit. Tell me just how popular is CrossFit in Nairobi right now? I would say right now it's quite popular because everyone is talking about it. Everyone wants to know what it's about. Everyone is joining all the CrossFit gyms in Nairobi. So. I'd say it's quite popular. Quite popular. And I mean it popular. I mean, it's win your cup. I'm just saying. <laughs> for real, no, for re- but for real, for real. Yeah. You, you would actually give yourself that credit? Yes. I okay, do. now we have to talk about that a little bit. How, how are you giving yourself that credit? Because we have to know. Because most people didn't believe that um, they could do CrossFit until they started seeing more of us do CrossFit and take part in it, especially the women. Mm-hmm. And most CrossFit gyms are actually full of women, which is amazing. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder, like for me, off the bat, I'm just like, what draws women in particular uh, to CrossFit? Because you don't really see women in the gym like that, like just a regular old, you know, your neighborhood gym. You don't really yeah. see a lot of women just going into the gym like yeah. that, but you see them going to a CrossFit center. Yeah. Like, why is that? I'd say it's the confidence that you get from um, CrossFit, especially the li- lifting of weights. Because, you know, most women think that when you lift weights, you're going to l- bulk up and look big. But, you know, you walk to a CrossFit gym and you see all those women lifting these heavy weights mm-hmm. and they, they look pretty normal. Yeah. And again, I'd say it's the self-esteem as well Mm -hmm. that comes off it. Like, no one can tell you anything if you're lifting that much. And also the community that comes out of it. You know, as women, we like making friends. So you walk into a gym, people are friendly, you're all enjoying the same workout. So I think that's why. Okay. Yeah. Now, before we go any further, um, for someone who's lived under a rock and has no idea what CrossFit is, yeah. please break it down for us. Yeah. But let me not abuse the people who live under rocks yeah. because I'm, I'm not sure like I fully understand what CrossFit is mm-hmm. and what makes it different from, yeah. say, weightlifting. Okay. Yeah. So I'd say CrossFit is a functional fitness um, type of fitness, which means that we're performing movements that we do on our, in our daily lives. I would say, for example, like, you know, when you squat, when mm-hmm. you go into the toilet, or mm-hmm. when you sit down, so all these movements. But also it has combined various sports, things like gymnastics, Olympic weightlifting, there's running, there's swimming, all that mm-hmm. in one. And then the other thing that makes it fun is the workouts vary every single day. It's not like the same it's thing. Different. Yeah, you might be doing the same movements, but the workouts are different. Okay, yeah. and then now weightlifting, yeah. um, because you're an expert in both. Yeah. Like, what is the difference now from weightlifting? Weightlifting yeah. is just so lifting the weights. Actually, CrossFit does have Olympic weightlifting, mm-hmm. but Olympic weightlifting has two movements, explosive mm-hmm. movements. There's the snatch, where you get the weight from ground over your head in one motion. Then there's a clean and jerk where you get the weight to your shoulders, then from your shoulders, you press it overhead. That thing with the, with the legs. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nice. So you see CrossFit made weightlifting popular because uh-huh. all the CrossFit gyms are now doing the Olympic weightlifting as yeah. part of a workout. Yeah. yeah. And 
essentially are you do you bulk more with weightlifting or do you become more ripped with crossfit is one more um what is it called this this anaerobic yeah and this aerobic right we do all that yeah so anaerobic is more like bulking short like short workouts okay sprint workouts so you'll find that there's a time you walk into the gym and we're doing like a three minute workout and someone's like what i came all this way for a three minute workout but the way you feel after that yeah. workout is just amazing so we have an aerobic and aerobic aspect of the workout okay crossfit makes you leaner and also depending on what you're trying to achieve you'll have to work on your nutrition okay if i want to get bigger then the amount of food that i'm eating has to be more than what I'm burning. Right. If I want to get lean, then my portion has to be a little bit skidogo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, um, I can't lie. Mm. Uh, CrossFit has always looked extremely painful. Yeah. And extremely difficult for me. Now, yeah. for me, I'm I'm six two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've had knee issues. I play basketball. Yeah. But I've had knee issues, probably very related to basketball. Yeah. Um, since I was maybe seventeen years old. Mm -hmm. So even just like a regular squat, yeah. you've talked about, you don't want to see me use the toilet. <laughs> I hang on to everything yeah. just to sit down yeah. because my knees hurt anytime I get into a squatting position. Mm -hmm. So I felt like CrossFit is not for me. Mm -hmm. And is that true? Is CrossFit really for everyone? Is it for the tall people as well as the short people? Or do you feel like there's a more advantage if you're shorter? There is a, a more advantage if you're shorter. But speaking of which, I had a friend who's like, quite tall like you and she's doing Olympic weightlifting I would say it would actually be beneficial for you because these movements are supposed to help you they're supposed to strengthen your joints they're supposed to strengthen the muscles around your joint so if you get a professional who knows how to coach you right and give you the proper technique then you have no you have no you have nothing to worry about it's all in the form and that's why we encourage for I'll talk about myself yeah. as a coach I encourage beginners to start with a proper foundation. Mm -hmm. Find someone who's professional and knows what they're doing mm -hmm. to guide you through, to give you the good basic. Right. Yeah. And that we'll be talking about like body weight stuff, right? Yeah. So you start off, if you get the body weight right, then you move over to the weights. It's going to be easier for mm -hmm. you and you're going to understand the mechanics. But if you get someone who doesn't take you through the proper foundation, then of course you're prone to injuries. Or you walk into the gym with your ego, like, you know, I've been gymming, yeah. I can do this. Yeah. So, yeah. And there are people who, who do of that, course, right? Of course, of course. Most of them. Yeah. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see they end up saying, oh, CrossFit is bad, CrossFit yeah. is this and that. Not really. You just have to be able to move with intention yeah. and work smart. So CrossFit... It's for everyone. It is for everyone. So Even when I retire, I should... 65-year-old people do CrossFit. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Even for me. Yeah. At 6'2". Yes. And my bad knees. Yes. I can make it. You can. Okay. Yeah. When I when I finally decide to retire, retire. Yeah. I think maybe I'll... I'll I'll no, you can even it. give it a try. Come, I coach you. Let's see. Yeah? Yeah. I'll, I'll hold you to that, Winnie. Okay. Now... There's a there's a lady I know that you know. Yeah. Joyce Nyagol. Yes. Now Nyagol was my teammate and a basketball team called Masaku Sparks way back when in like uh, no, 20, I see. 2015. Where she got this athleticism from. Right. Okay. But you see, it, when I saw that Nyagol got into CrossFit, I was not surprised at all. Yeah. And the reason was Nyagol was that player where um, when it's time for like scrimmage, scratcho, mm -hmm. like a uh, simulated game, mm -hmm. and you're told. Nyagol, take Silale. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Yo. then, so now I have like a, like a, a sit down with her before yeah. the game starts. I'm like, Nyagol, yeah. please. Yeah. Leo nguvu. <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with you with your aggression today. Yeah. And for her, she's just playing, but mm -hmm. she was a very aggressive defender and yeah. extremely physical. Yeah. So when she got into CrossFit, I was like, it's perfect. Yeah. And I feel like she had a very strong personality mm -hmm. she wasn't she, she, didn't, she didn't impose anything on you yeah but she just knew you don't mess with nyako yes that's so is that is, is, is it a chicken before the egg kind of thing like is it does the i feel like crossfitters have a certain personality not really no no because i every kwanza ladies mm. every lady that i know who's into crossfit mm. 
if I were to describe their personality, I would say confident, yeah, strong, yeah, not pushovers, uh -huh. look you in the eye type. Yeah, like we're talking, I'm looking you in the eye. I'm not yeah. feeling all shy and everything like that. Yeah, and I feel like that's a CrossFit thing. Yeah, no, I'd say. For the ones I've met, actually, most of them are very shy. I'm, I'm a very shy person. I only come off strong when I'm like training yeah. and I'm coaching. So I'd say it's the CrossFit that brings out that character. Hmm. You start doing CrossFit, then you're like, you know what? I can take over the world. I mean, I can climb the barbell, go over the barbell. So yeah. what else can I not do? Yeah. So it's actually from CrossFit that we get those type of characters. Okay, so, so CrossFit doesn't necessarily draw in a certain personality, yeah. but when you're involved with it... Yeah, it acts as a catalyst, yeah. 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 And why is that? Is it because there's a certain... Um, like, you know how in the army, um, there's a certain personality that is also developed from it because they push you to your very, very end yeah. and then show you that what you thought was your end was yes. actually, like, yeah. halfway. You I can enjoy still go. doing that. As a coach, I actually enjoy doing that. I just like explore, exploring people's potential. I'm like, I want to see what your body can do because you mm -hmm. only have one body. We might as well test and see what you can do. I feel like you and I would fight if you're my coach. <laughs> me, I'm like, I, listen, it's not that serious. <laughs> I'm done. Trust me, I am they're done. always fighting me, but they keep coming back. Really? I get that all the time, yes. So is it, you enjoy making people crack? Yes. I really? enjoy that. Yeah, because then you're like, oh my God, I thought I couldn't do it, but I've done it. Thank you so much. You have no idea what you've done to me. Yeah. You know, because they just need someone to believe in them. You just need someone to believe in you. Mm -hmm. And then you give it a try. So when do you know, like, when, when to, like, okay, this one I can push them to this breaking point, but this yeah. one I need to pull back a bit. Yeah. Like, you know how in the movies there's always yeah. that point where yeah. then the person cries, they yeah. run out, yeah. they're tired, and then they come it's back. I guess from experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, years of experience. Like, you meet the people with different personalities, mm -hmm. so you get to know, like, whom to push and whom to just push a little bit and wait for, like, time for, them, for that right moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already a little bit scared of you, <laughs> coach. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I can don't make it. You, you, I'm always nice to beginners. I'm always nice, and then once I see your potential, I'm like, okay, this one. This one we can okay, yeah. we can push them a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, get, I bet you're a really good life coach as well. Then. I've never tried, but I'll try. Mm, think about it. Think <laughs> I'll about give it. it a try. So you won the CrossFit Open. No, in actually, 2017? I was in 2017. Yes, yes, yes. Take you said that that was one of your most uh, memorable yes. experiences. Yeah. Please take us through what was that like for you? Uh, were you the only Kenyan in representation? Or was it something that was Africa wide, or was it global? Mm -hmm. It was actually global. And back then they used to do, you'll do like the open, then after the open you'll do regionals. So in Kenya, that was like my third competition. And that was the first competition that I could RX the workout. RX means that you do the workout as prescribed. If this is the weight, if you're meant to do handstand walks, if you're meant to do like muscle ups, you're supposed to do that as it is. So that was very memorable for me. Because now i just gotten all these movements and I felt like my fitness was all the way up there. So yeah, I was the fittest in Kenya and then I was number 200 in Africa. And you can imagine the number of athletes in Africa. Because yeah. back then, even the guys in the Middle East, Europe, Africa, were all under one continent. Because not so many people were doing CrossFit back then. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard for me. And yeah, I was really proud of my results. Wow. Yeah. So what made it extremely memorable for you? I would say the community, just the community coming together and supporting us and just watching us and pushing us. We had people even from bodybuilding, strongmen, just come and take part in it, wow. which was amazing. And I was put in the same heat as the men. Yeah, what? And I kicked their ass. What? I'm still proud to say that. Yes, oh my I goodness. did. <laughs> okay, but is that allowed? Yeah. How come they did that? 
So you, were, you were just that it was, good. It was my, my mentor, who was then my former boss, just wanted to prove to them that fitness is not all about aesthetics. Right. Yeah, you might look at someone and think that they're small and they cannot do this, and you're big, you can do this. Mm -hmm. So he was just trying to prove a point, mm -hmm. and he chose me to prove a point. Because honestly, Winnie, I feel like if I'm walking in town and like you walk past me, yeah. am I going to take a second look as in that's the strongest woman in Africa 2017? <laughs> no, you know, yeah. and I think that's that's amazing yeah. to me. It's like you said that strength is not an aesthetic. It's not about how you look. Yeah. Um, it's really just about what you can or cannot do. Yeah. So I really I do like that. Mm. About, about and I love it, too, because you see when you walk around, and people are like, this is my coach. Everyone's like, what? We expected your coach yeah. to be big and all yeah. that stuff. So I love it because strength is within. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mimi, I'm, I'm just out here fooling everybody. <laughs> yeah. fooling, thinking, telling everyone, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. badass, I'm strong. I am not. I really am not. You could probably beat me up completely. Um, but you were recently in Egypt in, for the outfit. Yes. Uh, I wasn't really sure about what that is about though and what's different from LFIT and like CrossFit or is it still under the same yeah, it's umbrella? Still, it's still CrossFit. It's a CrossFit licensed African Championship competition mm -hmm. and it was really big this year because they're celebrating 10 years and we had to do the qualifiers for us to make it down to Egypt. Qualifiers were here in Kenya? Yeah, you do them online Okay. and then you submit your scores mm -hmm. and then they rank you up if you make, um, they were taking top 35 women in Africa, so I was among the top 35 and that's why I qualified. Wow. Yeah. Nyoko went too, right? Yeah, yeah. She so she did. also qualified? Yeah, she did. I was so, I was super anyway, proud of her. It was awesome to just have another woman from Kenya. Yeah. There. Yeah. So you, do there, are there not a lot of women who qualify for those events in Kenya? Yes, and most of them are actually very scared to enter the competition and that's why mm -hmm. I'm trying to rally them up so that next year at least we can be a few of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're scared of the gymnastic, but it, it's quite hard. The workouts are very hard, so people are really scared. Yeah. Explain to me a little bit more about Elfit um, and the experience that you had this particular year. Mm -hmm. You said it was just you and your goal with only women who qualified. Yeah. So you go, you went to Cairo, Egypt. Yes. Um, now, was it like a one-day event, several-days event? Uh, how did it look like? So it was a three-day event. Mm -hmm. So those day one, we were doing three workouts. Day two, three workouts. So after day two, on the third day, you had to like qualify. So they were making cuts. Mm -hmm. So I was able to make it until the final. Yeah, which was amazing. I didn't think I'd get that far. Wow. Yeah, and the workouts were so tough because this was like this was my first CrossFit international competition. Wow. So I've never done like events where every it's every single day three events. It was very very hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, was it more like on the recovery end? Yeah, on the recovery end. Mm. Yeah, and the weather. Mm. It was just a lot. Wow. Yeah. So you made it to the finals. How many other ladies made it into the finals? So we were 16. Okay. When we started off in the morning, we were 24. Then they made the cut all the way to, on the second one was top 20. Then the last one, top 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay. So you're going to go back next year if you qualify? Yeah. So this time I want to go fight for the podium. This year, I was just, guys were like, you know, you have to enter. I was like, no, I want to enter as a team, but they didn't have a, like a team for ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so guys were like, now you have no choice but to enter as elite. I'm like, no, I'm a new mom. Mm -hmm. Can I just like sit out on this yeah. one? I'm like, no. So I started off with the qualifiers. And then now when I made it to Egypt, I was like, you know what? Let me give it my best and see, because here I am with all this amazing women who've yeah. gone to the CrossFit Games, they have this experience, so why not be among the best and give it my best? Yeah. yeah. So you're pr at the end of the day, you're proud of how you yes, performed? Yes, I am. Yeah. That's awesome. You are, you are properly inspiring me right now. <laughs> I, you can't even see it on the camera, but it, I am properly inspired by Winnie right now. I'm glad to hear that. Now, um, there's this stereotype that women, we can't be muscular yeah. and sexy. Yeah. At the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, I, my younger brother uh, was obsessed with weightlifting yeah. growing up, and he'd always tell me, "Don't ever be one of those women, those yeah. girls who are like, no, I don't do upper body because I don't want to be yeah. buff." Yeah. 
um, there's that stereotype of you're buff like that, then you're not sexy, you look like a man. And I'm sure as a coach, there are a lot of women who come to you and maybe um, share that fear. Yeah. But you, one, have shattered that stereotype yeah. because you're strong and you're sexy. Mm -hmm. But what do you tell um, these women who come and that is their fear or that is their concern? I do explain to them like the science behind it because, you know, women and men were not the same. Our hormones are not the same. And that's why men get to look the way they look and women get to look the way they look. If you find that some women are very, very muscular, then they're probably using something to look like that. So there's no way. And also, if you're not training to be like an athlete, proper, proper athlete, then there's no need for you to worry. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's good to, you know, walk into a mall and your shoulders are out and your triceps are right. popping and everyone is like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. I totally yeah. agree. But, I mean, you look at um, the examples of what beauty is supposed to be in advertisements and mm. billboards and everything. And yeah. it's, um, it's a very slim looking, there's extremes, I feel. Yeah. Like it's either super slim. Yeah. And in fact, right now in Hollywood and in the States, like the new oh. in thing is going back to what they call, the, I think the heroin girl, mm -hmm. where super, super skinny yeah. is now the standard of beauty. Yeah. Or it's the other end of the spectrum where you have thick babes. Yeah. Small waists, big bums, yeah. um, Coca-Cola shape. Yeah. And there's like, no examples of, unless you're advertising for the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. You know, there are no examples of uh, beautiful women who are very muscular yeah. and very athletic looking. Um, and I think it's probably discouraging, especially, you know, when you're in that preteen age. Yeah. Like 13, 14, and you're starting to understand the standards of beauty. Yeah. Um, so, like, for you, I know you have a, a daughter. Yes, I do. Like, once she gets there and, say, she starts getting the big guns like you, yeah. like, how are you going to encourage her? Or how would you encourage um, young women and older women as well that it's okay to have that kind of body type and still be feminine still be and if you don't want to be feminine it's fine yeah. but still be a woman so basically what i do is i lead by example and also just show them that you know people like to see they learn from watching and where if we are so many out there who look like that then everyone else would want to look like that and also just convince them that you don't have to be what society dictates you know, mm. be, as long as you're happy, you're enjoying whatever you're doing, you're looking amazing, you feel the confidence, then let no one convince you of how you should look like. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we encourage CrossFit. Because with CrossFit, once you you leave the gym and you've achieved that goal that you've been wanting to achieve, no one can tell you anything. Yeah. I really like that, Winnie. I really like um, how empowered I feel right now as a woman mm -hmm. and as an athlete especially uh, and I hope that uh, the female viewers are actually getting that vibe as well mm -hmm. um, but we're also still human right yeah we are um, and like for me like I have a body part that I'm insecure about believe it or not mm -hmm. for the longest time I was insecure about my proportion I have a very short torso as you, as you guys can see Winnie and I are the same height seated <laughs> But if we were to stand up, I'd be much, much taller than yeah. you. So I was self-conscious about the fact that I have really long legs yeah. and then a small torso. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you, or if you don't mind me asking, what body part or physical feature are you self-conscious about? I used to. I used to have knocked knees. And my mom would make fun of me when like I'd wear like shit. skirts and dress. <laughs> yeah, she used to make fun of me. And oh, then now, yeah. when I started doing CrossFit, it helped with my posture. Oh. And I also used to do like this because I, I really wanted to be a tomboy. So mm. I'd like walk like this. But exercise really helped me with my posture. Mm. And I know sometimes I do get insecure with, I was even just complaining to my husband the other day before I went to Egypt guys were like, eh, and I'm umeunga, like you look like a dude and all. So I went to my husband, I'm like, I don't know if they're making fun of me yeah. or it's a compliment. But then he was like, look at what you're doing. You're like among the 1% of the population who are doing extraordinary things. So that should be something 
that should be giving you courage and self-confidence. So forget about the outside world. But these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you need a community. You need people around you who are going to encourage you and just show you the positive side of it. Yeah. Yeah, and feed you with positive words of affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good husband you've got there. He, he has no choice. He has to be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Yeah. So while we're on the topic now of family, yeah. um, who or what yeah. is your why? Like what gets you out of bed? What gets you motivated? What keeps you pushing on those days where you really just don't want to push? I would say before my daughter, before I gave birth, it used to be um, where cost me, CrossFit got me from. Because I was going through life, you know, after uni and family stuff and all that stuff. So CrossFit used to be my therapy. And that's why I'd wake up every day excited to go there because that used to be my safe space. And then when I give birth, it's my daughter. I don't want her to look at me and give up. I want her to see me and see hope. I want her to see me and see that it's possible. I want her to see me and see that you can do anything that you put your mind to. So that's my why for now. Okay. Yeah. That's a cute why. Yeah. Um, I know I, I, I'm still trying to, you know, I don't want to cross any of your boundaries, but yeah. I am curious to know what was it that took you um, to that dark place where CrossFit brought you out of? Well, you know, as African families, of course, parents go through stuff and kids, we just find ourselves in the midst of all this. And most of the time, as a 20-year-old, you don't know what to do. Some people turn to drugs, some people just get lost somewhere. But now when I found CrossFit, I was able to find myself again and it just taught me how to get through life. Like I got life skills from CrossFit, from doing all those workouts. Mm -hmm. It's like if I can do this, then I can fight this. Mm -hmm. And also just the happy hormones that you get from working out makes you forget about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a, an earlier interview I think I read somewhere. Yeah. Um, and you said that one of the big things was heartbreak. Yes. For you. Yes. Uh, Want to talk about it? Yeah. Should I get you some hot chocolate? No. You know what? I got it. I'm a big girl now. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But you know the reason why I'm bringing it up is because some there's some people who get like someone else is gonna be in like that same experience as you, but yeah. they're still in the low. Yeah. They've not managed to pull themselves out of yeah. it. But for them to see, you know, you're here, you're happy, you have a beautiful family, mm -hmm. um, you're strong, I, I feel like it might encourage them to just keep on pushing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I was in uni when I, this boy decided to break my heart. And it was actually my friend who was like, you know what, instead of us going out and drinking and all that stuff, let's put all this energy in the gym. And I'm the person of why not. So that's how I started gymming. And I felt like it was healing me because now I was researching about this work I started yeah. doing. So my mind was occupied. Mm -hmm. And then I started seeing results. And I'm like, you know what? Revenge body, you know, doing all those things. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, it's, it's, it's not just CrossFit. Sometimes when you're going through these things, you just find something that will pull you out of that and make you remember you again mm -hmm. and forget about this other person. Yeah. yeah. So it reminded of me and who I am and what I'm capable of. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Um, now, you're also a pregnancy and postpartum certified coach. Have I got that yes. title correct? Yes. You okay. got it right. All right. Great. Um, tell us about your journey. Uh, after having your beautiful daughter and then now trying to get back yeah. in shape yeah. because there are so many layers about um, the postpartum journey. Yeah. Uh, and I remember like um, my mom told me, uh, you know, when you're in like month, like the eighth month and you're heavy and you're just tired and she yeah. was like, you think this is the hard part, yeah. but no one talks about the part immediately after mm -hmm. pregnancy when you're especially for an athlete when you're trying to get back in shape yeah. um, mentally yeah. um, the depression that comes in so what was like your personal journey like trying to get back 
into shape I'd after giving birth? It was quite difficult. It started off with like the first three months when I just had to be in the house. I've never stayed in the house for three months without mm. going to the gym. So it was a little bit hard for me and I used to be cranky and would have like a lot of fights with my husband. But now when I got back to the gym, I was so happy. I was in my happy space. I was like, this is what I needed. But now as an athlete, getting back to training was really hard for me. Because right. I was battling the fact that I used to be better than this. I used to move faster than this. I used to be able to do that and this. So it was really hard for me. There's a time I even got a panic attack. At the gym? Yeah. Because mentally I was fighting the fact that this used to be easy. Why am I struggling? Why can I not move like before? So I couldn't breathe. My world just got dark. I had to step out. I cried a little, came in, picked my bag and left. So my partners had to call me, my training partners. They had to call me and ask, are you okay? And all that stuff. So I would say it's the community that helped me get through it. Mm. Without them... I wouldn't have pulled through as an athlete, mm -hmm. yeah. And by community, you mean? The people around me, the people I coach, the people I live with, um, the people who knew the past me, mm -hmm. and also my boss. It's right. always good to have like a boss who understands these things because he has kids. So he was like, I understand what my wife used to go through because mm. she was also an athlete. So he really helped me through it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that's very encouraging. Um, and like, just from a physiological standpoint, yeah. like how did you get back into the stage where you actually went to Elfit and got to the finals? Um, well, a supporting husband. Mm -hmm. um, he is so good with nutrition, so he used to help with my nutrition. I told him, you know what, babe, I wanna, I really wanna give it my all at least. Even if I'm to quit, I want to say that, you know what, I gave it a hundred, I did all those things that I've never done in the past before, and I'd like you to walk with me and help me with that, of which he did. And also I got a training partner, but he moved away. He used to wake up with me at 4 a.m. to train. I've never trained at 4 a.m., but I did all that. So we used to wake up at 4 a.m., I'd train, and then also now the fact that I was focusing on my nutrition and my sleep really helped me with that. Yeah. Yeah. What role does, because um, I'm part of this uh, mom's group, yeah. a WhatsApp group yeah. of very, very, very supportive moms. Yeah. And, you know, we talk a lot about mom issues inside there, and one of them is definitely getting back to at least close to where we were before we gave birth. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. No, it's not. Because genetics also plays a role. Yeah. Um, like you've said, something really important, diet yeah. plays a huge role. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that, especially when it comes to maybe weight loss and gain, yeah. your diet is, probably plays a bigger role than actually the physical things yeah. that you do. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you find that balance and how do you figure out what works for one person and what doesn't work for the other? So usually, um, I do the exercise part, then my husband does the nutrition part. He will sit down with you, find out your body type and also your habits and guide you through it. So mm -hmm. we don't just do one size fits all. Right. We do what works for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And have, they, have you dealt with any clients who've had like really inspiring stories? And yes, yes. There's one lady called Candice who's now she joined me immediately I got my certification she was like you know what I want to work with you mm -hmm. so it's been almost one year now and she's doing amazing she's happy she's glowing she even got a new job yeah and also just having I think my clients have helped me more than I have helped them because mm. just talking about mom stuff and what we're going through and sometimes we meet up we haven't slept mm. so we get to share all that it's more than just Pregnancy and postpartum exercise, right. I guess, yeah. So how do you find um, the balance? I mean, you're a wife, yeah. you're a mom, yeah. you're a coach. You got to have some time for yourself and yeah. the girls, yeah. you know, to hang out or do some things that you truly, truly enjoy yeah. um, outside of maybe um, working out. Like, how do you strike that balance? So what I do is, again, 
I'll go back to being thankful to having a very supportive husband. Mm. He works from home. So he lets me like go to work and then in the afternoon I'll come spend time with my daughter and then maybe in the evening go out for like a walk or hang out with friends, then come back home. So I guess it's having that supportive system mm -hmm. and people you can trust your baby with. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I'm I'm getting a lot from you is just hearing how much you're talking about your your tribe. Yeah. And the people around you who are supporting you. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it's it's clear that you really can't be an island if you're trying to be a success, um, a well-rounded success, yeah. you know, because you're successful with CrossFit um, mm. as a wife, as a mom, uh, as a coach, as a friend. Yeah. But it's because of these support systems that you have that are lifting you. Yeah. Even, even like at work, my boss just gives, gave me flexible hours. So that way, that's why I decided to like go f at 4 a.m. so that in the afternoon I have time to spend with my baby mm -hmm. and do other stuff. Yeah. So it's that support system that yeah. I have. Yeah. Wow. Um, now I found, I found this quote mm -hmm. and I thought of you when mm -hmm. I found it. Uh, it says, because I am a woman, I must make unusual efforts to succeed. Yeah. If I fail, no one will say she doesn't have what it takes. Mm. They will say women don't have what it takes. That's true. Do you resonate with that? Yes, I do. And most of it, actually, most of my success, I would say it's cause just meeting, you know, men can be stubborn sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when they come in to my gym and they want to be coached, and you're not able to do things that they expect you to do, then they won't listen to you. So at some point I ended up learning very hard stuff. So that way they can be like, okay, you can do it, so I'll listen to you. Because mm -hmm. if you cannot do it, then they can't listen to you. They're like, what are you telling me? You can't yeah. even do this. Yeah, so it's a little bit hard being a woman sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say it's a lot a bit hard <laughs> most of the times. It um, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of pressure yeah. Uh, like you said, especially in the in a dealing with a lot of men. Yeah. Um, in the weightlift, I feel like like you said, CrossFit there are a lot of women, but in weightlifting, um, maybe circles is probably more men. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for that level of pressure, um, how do you deal with it? Well, I'm a bit cocky when it comes to that. So I will outperform. <laughs> <laughs> I'll overperform, I'll do better, and uh -huh. I'll brag about it to, your, to their faces. When I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm looking at you, and I'm trying to think about that personality, and I, I'm not connecting the dots. I'm really not connecting the dots. They can testify. To <laughs> so I'll walk around the gym making sure that they know. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. They're the balls. Uh huh. <laughs> so I'll always pick up a challenge. Yeah. I'll always ask someone to challenge me, and uh -huh. I'll be like, you know what? I'll do it, even though I know deep down I cannot do it. But I'll just try it, and I'll do it. And I'll brag about it. So this, well, give me an example. Is it like, like deadlifting some insane amount? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my video. I was doing a muscle up with a med ball in between my leg. I was just pulling myself up on the rings and then up there. So Okay, so a muscle up is the one where it's like it's the thing that they do in gymnastics, right? Yes, yes. So you have those rings, you hang yeah, on to it. Then yeah, you... and then you pull yourself all the way up uh -huh. and hang on to the rings. And you do that with? With a med ball in between. And I'm going to tell them, guess who just gave birth and is doing all this? You, what are you doing? With your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just, sometimes oh, I make it fun. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's it. You just have fun. It's mm -hmm. not that serious. Wow. Mm. Miss Kia. <laughs> the men in this room, Miss Kia. <laughs> huh? What rings can you hang off of? <laughs> okay, let me let me leave. That. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Time out. We forgot. We have a gift here for our very esteemed, lovely, beautiful, hot babe. Ooh, I love gifts. I love gifts. Dendry have given you an umbra bag. Oh, thank you. They have a wide range of uh, Kenyan bags. Very beautiful Kenyan bags. Um, you can get the full catalog at Denry Africa stores and they wanted us to make sure we get this to you. They love hooking up our sports celebrity gifts with only the best bags. So I don't know what you would put inside here, Thank you but so much. I'm jealous. I will be wearing it while I'm coaching. So it matches your jacket. Can just see. Yeah, I'll just have it here 
You'll see it tomorrow in the news, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed this uh, chat with you. Yeah, me too. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, I feel like if some pe people who've watched this podcast, if they've not been struck by some form of inspiration, yeah. then I don't know what to tell them. Well, I hope they are inspired. And they should always, never be scared of failing. If there's something that I've learned from my daughter, is the fear of failure is actually learned with time. So just go for it. And it's okay to fail and try again. Yeah. And that's why even when I was in Egypt, people ask why I smile and I'm doing those workouts and I'm in pain because I'm not scared of failing because I'm having fun and that's my environment. Mm -hmm. So in whatever you do, have fun, do it with a smile and don't be scared of failing. I think that's beautiful. And guys, I think that's a great place for us to stop. Don't be afraid of failure. Please show Winnie some love in the comments. And if you want to get your ass kicked, yes. the place to go is? To Al Alpha Fit Nairobi. Alpha Fit Nairobi. Is yeah, the on Gong Road at Ligindogo. Ask for Winnie. She will show you the fire, the more <laughs> fire. <laughs> guys, if you liked this video, hit the like button and if you loved it please do not forget to subscribe also let us know in the comments who else you'd like to see on the narrative podcast we'll see you all next week for some more inspiration